The man on duty at the crossing rushed to warn traffic with his red flag, but was too late to switch Percy to the runaway side. Frantically trying to grip the rails, Percy slid into the yard. Look out! The brake van was in smithereens. Percy's driver and fireman had jumped clear, but Percy was stranded. Next day, Sir Topham had arrived. Toby and Daisy had helped to clear the wreckage, but Percy remained on his perch of freight cars. We must now try, said Sir Topham Hatt, to run the branch line with Toby and a diesel. You have put us in an awkward predicament, Percy. I am sorry, sir. You must stay there till we are ready, continued Sir Topham Hatt. And you really must be more careful with freight cars. Percy sighed. The freight cars groaned beneath his wheels. He quite understood about awkward predicaments. Sir Topham Hatt spoke severely to Daisy, too. My engines work hard. I send lazy engines away. Daisy was ashamed. However, Toby says you worked hard after Percy's accident. So you shall have another chance. Thank you, sir, said Daisy. I will work hard. Toby says he'll help me. Excellent. What Toby doesn't know about branch line problems isn't worth knowing. Our Toby's an experienced engine. Next day, Thomas came back. And Percy was sent to be mended. Annie and Clarabelle were delighted to see Thomas again, and he took them for a run at once. All are now friends, and Toby has taught Daisy a great deal. She shooed a cow off the line the other day all by herself. That shows you, doesn't it? Why should Henry have a new shape, he grumbled. A shape good enough for me is good enough for him. He goes gallivanting off, leaving us to do his work, and comes back saying how happy he feels. It's disgraceful. And there's another thing. Henry whistles too much. No respectable engine ever whistles loudly at stations. It isn't wrong, but we just don't do it. Poor Henry didn't feel happy anymore. Never mind, whispered Percy. I'm glad you're home again. I like your whistling. Goodbye, Henry, called Gordon. We're glad to have you with us again, but remember what I said. Later, Henry stopped at Edward's station. Hello, Henry, said Edward. You look splendid. I was pleased to hear your happy whistle yesterday. Thank you, Edward, smiled Henry. Can you hear something? It sounds like Gordon, said Edward, and it ought to be Gordon, but Gordon never whistled like that. It was Gordon. He came rushing down the hill at a tremendous rate. He didn't look at Henry, and he didn't look at Edward. He screamed straight through the station and disappeared. Well, said Edward. It isn't wrong, chuckled Henry, but we just don't do it. And he told Edward what Gordon had said. everyone covered their ears. Sir Topham Hatt covered his ears, too. 
Take him away, he bellowed, and stop that noise. Gordon puffed sadly away, but he wouldn't stop whistling until two fitters climbed up and knocked his whistle valve in place. That night, Gordon slunk into the shed. He was glad it was empty. It isn't wrong, murmured Henry to no one in particular, but we just don't do it. No one mentioned whistles. Next morning, Henry was enjoying himself enormously. I feel so well, I feel so well, he sang. Trickety-trock, trickety-trock, hummed his coaches. Then he saw some boys on a bridge. Beep, beep, hello, he whistled. Oh, he called. The boys didn't wave and take his number. They thought it fun to drop stones on him instead. They've broken our glass, they've broken our glass, cried the coaches. The passengers weren't hurt, but they were cross. Call the police. No, said the driver, leave it to Henry and me. What will you do, they asked. Can you keep a secret? Yes, yes. Well then, said the driver, Henry is going to sneeze at those boys. Lots of people were waiting at the station just before the bridge. They wanted to see what would happen. Henry has plenty of ashes, said the driver. Please keep all windows shut till we've passed the bridge. Henry's as excited as we are, aren't you, old fellow? Henry felt more stuffed up than excited. Soon they could see the boys, and they all had stones. Are you ready, Henry? said the driver. Sneeze hard when I tell you. Now, he said. Well done, Henry, laughed his driver. Henry went home, hoping that next time he saw Gordon and the boys, they would have learned not to be so mean. Scrapyard is full of rusty old parts and machinery. They're broken into pieces, loaded into cars, and Edward pulls them to the steelworks where they are melted down and used again. Today, there was a surprise waiting for Edward in the yard. It was a traction engine. Hello, said Edward. You're not broken and rusty. What are you doing here? I'm Trevor. They're going to break me up next week. What a shame, said Edward. My driver says I only need some paint, polish, and oil to be as good as new. But my owner says I'm old-fashioned. Edward snorted. People say I'm old-fashioned, but I don't care. Sir Topham Hatt says I'm a useful engine. What work did you do? My owner would send us from farm to farm. We threshed corn, hauled logs, and did lots of other work. The children loved to see us. Trevor shut his eyes, remember? Oh, yes, I like children. 